Hey, 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 Mike Healy here. Can you, uh, if you're just joining me for my Facebook Live, um, I'm doing this, I think it's in the middle of the afternoon here. So if you're here, I appreciate it. I uh, wanted to say hi. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be covering some tips on uh, recruiting and uh, I will be taking some questions. Uh, if you want to kind of leave those in the comment section below, uh, hopefully you'll be able to uh, watch the replay of this, uh, share it, you know, tag some people in it if you want down below in the comment section. And then uh, more than likely, I'll probably download this and put it up on uh, YouTube and so on. So um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, say hi to everybody. And, you know, if you want, you can also leave me a message below and uh, let me know the city and state you're, you're uh, watching from. I always kind of like to keep uh, keep track of that. Got a hair stuck in my eye. <laughs> so anyhow, um, I would recommend if you're going to take the time to watch this to begin with, maybe have a, p a pen and paper handy because I want to give you some notes, some things you can go over. And uh, then, you know, we'll, we'll, I'll take some time on some things. I've got some things written down. I've got some things I'm going to show you and uh, we're going to go through it. OK, so um, I'm going to uh, actually just jump right into this and get into the details. And then as I get to once I get kind of uh, done with some of the meat and potatoes, what I'm going to give you, then I'll take some questions that you can put comments below and ask me anything if you'd like to specifically. And again, even if you're watching this recorded, if you put a comment down there, a lot of times I'll still see it or get a notification. And I can still answer that maybe uh, through typing or text. So anyhow, all right. So what I want to do is I want to talk to you about, uh, this is uh, kind of something near and dear to my heart um, about recruiting. Okay. And primarily we're talking about recruiting and network marketing. So quick history of myself, in case you don't know who I am, most of you do. A lot of you probably watching this know who I am. I've uh, been in the network marketing industry about 23, 24 full years full time, primarily, probably at least 20 uh, of those years full time, uh, seven figure earn and so on. The one thing I will tell you, though, and this is actually I'm glad I just remembered this, that I want to address something ahead of time um, because I saw some other people make posts about this, uh, you know, uh, before about the significance of finding the right upline. OK, now don't panic because I'm going to tell you something right now in the very first company that I joined, uh, when I first got into it, I was all excited. Uh, I joined this company. I signed with a friend of mine that I knew. And this kid, literally, because I was, I think, 27 and he was 26, within uh, three weeks after he enrolled me, um, he inherited $3.2 million uh, from a, literally from an uncle uh, that had passed away and left, uh, he, he didn't have any kids and left them to the, this to that, these three kids. So it was three way split. Anyhow, so this kid gets $3.2 million. Let me ask you real quick, how motivated was my upline now to help me with my success? Okay. Obviously he had no you know, interest really at all in networking at that time and pretty much disappeared. Okay. Now, what do you do? Okay. So here, here's the, here's the kind of uh, something I want to address is a lot of times people think that their success is going to be uh, primarily based on their upline. And I will tell you that it's not. Okay. And there, there's the, the, the thing is, is you can gather information and you can have some strong uplines, some people that will help you. But I want you to understand that you have to ultimately learn the skills, apply the skills, get the attitude and make it happen yourself. Um, yes, there's team, team, you know, team involvement and so on. But ultimately, it is going to come down to your ability to develop, uh, to, to take action using skills that you picked up from either your upline, cross line or so on. OK, because because I've gotten e emails and texts and, and comments before where people would say, oh, I wish, Mike, you were my upline. And I and I kind of I, I, I appreciate the comment. But at the same time, don't uh, put your success on your upline due to the fact that it's going to be your business. Anytime I ever, once I figured this out years ago, once I figured it out, I was going to, if I was going to do something, it was going to really ultimately have to be up to my skills that I was going to have to learn. I was going to have to obtain. I was going to have to apply. Okay. So I'm telling you that so that you come into this with a realistic expectation of what I'm about to teach you when it comes to recruiting. Okay. So in network marketing, we're going to jump into this now in network marketing, all, it's all about exposing your business, exposing your message, exposing your story to as many people as humanly possible, really as fast as you can. OK, there's not it's not rocket science to what we could do. And most people could learn the strategies you need uh, to be a good recruiter or to learn network marketing in probably about 30 minutes. I mean, ultimately, that's really what it comes down to. OK, 
but I believe that I've developed a few simple steps and some things that I can guide you or give you tips on that can kind of help keep you in the game, help you propel your business and increase that activity and productivity, most importantly, to start growing something to where you're in a state, you got an established business and you're building a, uh, you know, a nice, nice book of business. Okay. So all that being said is this. So, so if you got your pen and paper, I'm going to give you some strategies. I'm going to give you some tips and we're going to get into this uh, and so on. Okay. So I have what I believe is something that I developed years ago. I have a five step process. You've seen this probably if you've watched any of my other stuff, I'm going to give you some new stuff tonight or some stuff you may have not heard. So just hang with me. But I have a five step process of recruiting that I believe has worked. It has definitely worked for me over the years. The reason I can back that up is I have personally enrolled. This is me personally enrolling uh, over 1,300 people now. I personally enrolled over 1,300 people in my career. OK, understand, though, that it took a while. I picked up speed over the last 10 years, to say the least. So probably 90 percent of those happened in the last 10 years because I developed better skills and listened to, uh, to better people and took more responsibility on myself. OK, so my five steps, if you want to write these down, are these. OK, it's prospect, contact, present, follow up and repeat. Prospect, contact, present, follow up and repeat. And I'm going to break them down for you and I'm going to give you some tips on those. OK, so here's the thing. OK, so that's the five step formula of prospecting, contacting and presenting. Now, here's the one thing that I think separates me or my ability to out recruit just about anybody in any company that I've ever come into. And it was and I have to give you uh, I'm going to give you the story of this so that it sticks with you better. OK, and it's a it's a it's, I call it the dollar dollar bill story. OK, so here's what the, this there. I went to a network marketing training. I was in my uh, I believe it was the second company I ever did. Still pr pretty rough around the edges. And the guy in front of the room was trying to teach us a lesson. And he said he said, OK, here's the deal. Everybody take out a dollar bill. OK, so everybody had a one dollar bill in their, their pockets. And he said, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a contest. It's going to be 15 minutes long. We're going to be moving around the room and so on. OK, so there's about 100 people in this room. And he said, here's what I need you to do. I need you. Here's the here's the contest. Here's what the contest is, is I need you to take your dollar and I need you to go get a dollar from as many people in the room as you can. And here's how. And he says, I don't care what you do or how you do it. You have to go out and basically ask somebody or offer somebody something that would engage them or, or, or compel them to give you their dollar. OK. And at the end of the at the end of the uh, contest, whoever has the most dollars basically wins. Right. So I thought that was pretty cool. So I started thinking in my head, OK, because here's what you have to understand is you have to learn what the actual rules of the game are and play those strategically uh, as quick and as hard as you can. OK, that's that's something important. And I'm getting to it. So during this contest, so the guy says, all right, you know, I got my stopwatch, go. And then he stood up on stage and watched everybody. Well, the whole room, everybody, the buzz was in the room and everybody starts walking around. So I thought to myself, I said, how can I get people to give me a dollar? So what I did was I went out there and I walked up to per somebody. I thought of this really cool thing because the contest was to get somebody to give me their dollar. That's all it was. Right. And I walked up to everybody and I said, hey, if you'll give me your dollar, I will teach you everything you need to know to be a millionaire in less than 90 seconds. And that's what that's what they would. Uh, and then they go, oh, OK. And they would hand me their dollar. And I go, thank you. And I walked away. OK, because, you, you know, you got to understand here. The contest wasn't to train somebody. The contest wasn't even to, uh, if, you know, give them the details of what you just said or anything like that. The contest and the rules of the game was to go around as fast as I could in 15 minutes to as many people, anybody in this room could have that chance to do that and ask as many people a simple question to get them to give me a dollar. So I asked that one person that question, they gave me a dollar. And then I walked over to the next person, I asked another one, they gave me their dollar. And then I asked, and people would laugh, okay? At the end of 15 minutes, they said, okay, everybody calms down, everybody sits around, and everybody got back to their seats. Now here's what was really, really cool that was intriguing that the gentleman, uh, the, the trainer at the front of the room said. He said, now, he gave an evaluation of this room. And now I can I can tell you that this is this is 100 percent legit because in huge groups and huge trainings that I've done myself in front of hundreds of people, I've done this exact same contest. And every single time the results come out the same. 
no, no question. It's just human nature. It's one of those things that happens is he said, okay, now, and then what he did is he evaluated and he had everybody stand up, everybody that stand up in the room that lost your dollar and you have no dollars, uh, you know, everybody stand up basically. And if you lost your dollar and you have no dollars, sit down. And I'm telling you at least uh, 75 to 80% of the room is sat down. Here is a huge, huge recruiting point for you to understand this. So this guy then, and I've done this, and like I said, I've done these in my own meetings. I talked, this guy says, he looked at these people and he said, I'll tell you what happened. When you went out and you asked that first question and you either gave your dollar away to somebody and when you lost your dollar and you didn't have another dollar, you stopped going out and asking more people to go out there and get, uh, get the dollar. You never, you got it. He goes, I watched some of you, as soon as you lost your dollar, I watched some of you go out the hallway and you went to the bathroom. Some of you just sat down. Some of you just, uh, we didn't have cell phones back then when this first, uh, first time I saw this and they, and they walked away. Others, you see, you saw that. So, so 80% of the room dropped off when they had either, they lost their very first dollar or they asked somebody for their, for a dollar and so on. Then he said, everybody here that did not get more than a dollar, but you still have your dollar. And everybody was like this. They were waving their dollar. Who has their dollar? Who has their dollar? And he goes, he goes, I want you guys all to sit down. He goes, you guys lost the contest as well. And I was like, huh? They still got their dollar. And he goes, what happened was you never took any kind of risk to go out there and do anything. And you just held on to your dollar. So you never advanced. You never, you never really took a risk. You never, you know, did anything. And he went right through around it. And then he asked, he, then he went, he said, okay, how many people have more than two remain standing? And then, you know, a handful of people dropped off. If you got five or more dollars, hand off. And then it got up all the way to where if you, uh, there was like um, three people in the room, myself and two other people. If you had like $10 in your hand, you know, st remain standing. And then this guy, the, the one, the, I think it was a girl, that the lady that dropped off, she had like $10, $15 in her hand. And the other one had $22. And then I stood there and I stood there. I was the guy that won the contest. And I've never seen this contest before. When I sat down, I had $35 in my hand, $35. And everybody gave me an applause. I got to put the $35 in my pocket. But I'm, but this, this, uh, I probably heard this and watched this happen in my, in, in that room, probably close to 17 years ago is when that happened. And I'm telling you, the biggest light bulb went on in my brain about recruiting than anything I've done. And I believe why I've been so successful and why you can be successful as well is I understood that I had that you had the, the number one thing was to say less to more people, to say less to more people as fast as I could, as fast as I could, as fast as I could. And until people actually um, understood that until I, until I really grasped that that was the key um, I'd seen. And I was up until that point because I, this was my second company. So I'd, I'd already spent four years. I was in another company for four years and only recruited like 40 people over four years, which is to me is not a lot. Okay. Um, you know, I, I average, I think, you know, almost a rep a day and, and, you know, and so on. But 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 that was a really big turning point. And so when I started doing when I you know got a little more popular and started doing my own events, when I would do these things, I would do the same thing. In fact, in some rooms, I watched people where they all got together and they pooled their dollars because that's what they were doing. Right. So they all pooled their dollars. So there's like 10 of them that pooled their dollars. So they eat, everybody put in one and maybe one or two had that. And when they held it up, they still they thought they had won. But I was like, well, if you split that up between everybody, you guys have lost more money than you gained to begin with. OK, so anyhow, I thought that that was a it's a powerful story. It's a powerful principle that if you if you understand it and you apply it, everything else I'm about to show you or tell you st uh, strategically is going to make a lot more sense and help you. OK, so ultimately, you're going to have to do that now um, or, or, or you're going to have to know that now. Uh, back to my five steps. Okay. I wanted to start with the first one. The first one is prospect. Okay. Prospect prospecting is merely just who am I going to talk to? Okay. That's, that's all prospecting is. Okay. Now the thing is, is I don't, I think that um, in, in, in networking, especially anything new or anything like that, most people have too much uh, pride 
involved in their recruiting process. And usually they, they hesitate on preconceived ideas or decisions they're making in their heads on somebody else's success. Okay. And you're probably shaking your head. Yes, I would imagine, you know, yep, I've been there, done that. I don't know if that guy's, I'm telling you, there is nothing, um, there's nothing more depressing than to show up at a big event with a guy that you wanted or thought you should talk to, but then you, you, uh, you know, pre prejudged him in your head and said, I'm not, this isn't, you know, I, I, this guy, you know, he makes six figures at least. Um, he's way too busy. I'm not going to do that. Da, 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 da. And that dude shows up, you know, sitting next to a friend of you know somebody else in the room and turns out that guy's, you know, like a, uh, you know, super mega ambassador in your company. Okay. It happens all the time. Okay. So you may want to write this down. Learn to be the messenger, not the message. Learn to be the messenger, not the message. The one thing that I have always learned how to do, and I would recommend you do it is, and I say this tongue in cheek, stay as dumb as possible. <laughs> okay. Now I'm not saying that you can't get people answers, but I am saying that if you become the issue, your recruiting in most cases slows down and becomes harder. Okay. It slows down and becomes harder. Let me tell you how this works. Okay. Typically people, when they join you, they're going to join you if they believe they can do what you just did to get them in the business. So when somebody talks to me, typically, even if I do know some serious details, I'm always asking myself, is there a tool or something or video? You know, when I say tool, uh, CD, video, recording, recorded call, website, brochure, anything that I can give to somebody to answer a question that they might have if it's somewhat detailed. OK, so so if we're talking about, you know, the, the gel product that we're, you know, a lot of us are marketing out there. If somebody asks me about the ingredients to the product, a lot of people think that they have to go get all this knowledge on how the product works, how the FDA stuff happens, the compensation, downline reports, back office things, you know, grand poobah promotions, and you get bogged down with the details and you forget the dollar strategy that I just told you a little bit ago. You forget the messaging. You forget, well, you know, the law of large numbers and going out there and making stuff happen and you get bogged down trying to learn stuff. One of the reasons that I make so many training videos and put videos on YouTube and, you know, stuff on websites is because I can recruit very easily because when somebody asks me a question, even though I could regurgitate most of the information, I say, hey, I'll send you the video on it. I'll send you the website on it. I'll send you the PDF on it because here's what they're thinking. Can I do it? Can I do it? Can I do it? Right. And is it worth it? And can I do it? Well, when I do that, they're thinking in our, their head, well, if somebody asks me about the product, I can send them a PDF. I can send them a video and so on. So, you know, because you hear the, you hear the phrase in networking all the time about duplication, right? Uh, you know, I don't, I systems are duplicatable. People are not. Systems are duplicatable, people are not, because everybody's personality is different, right? So my personality is different than yours and, and vice versa. But we could, with a system of, you know, being able to teach people how to share tools and show people information, anybody can do that. Anybody can see themselves giving that kind of information out, okay? So so anyhow, I really rabbit trailed on you with uh, with prospecting, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick to it. I'm going to keep going here. And then I'll take, I'll take questions here in, in a little bit, okay? Now, prospecting, when it talks about recruiting, because this is, I, I know what it was, it led me into prejudging and then I rambled, then I rabbit trailed on you, but hopefully it was a good rabbit trail. Okay, thank you, Gary. Um, what I would tell you is this, is back to prejudging, everybody's got one of these, right? Everybody's got a phone, okay? And in most cases, you've seen or you should have seen the video that I did uh, on texting people, okay? Now, here's the thing is understand this, that the majority of people, I'm not going to make a decision to join you in your business, join you in the company, um, you know, become your superstar rep in the first initial contact or the second or even the third or maybe even the fourth or fifth. OK, it just typically doesn't happen that way. Multiple touch points is really what it what the important thing is. And there's there's a, you know, Internet marketers out there that call it much multi touch point marketing. OK, and I've studied all that and I understand all these strategies as well. But I'm going to give you the basics of this. 
typically what happens is you need to have, if you think about it, you have a list of people that you're going to contact. Okay. And it's through text. It's through a phone call. It's potentially through an email, either way, one way, shape or form. I typically at least just throw my, uh, you know, my hat in the ring to let them know what I'm doing. I'm not saying that uh, I'm expecting them to join immediately. Okay. That's not, that's not the deal. I'm not expecting them to join right out of the gates and so on. I'm just trying to touch base, find out if they're interested to begin with. Okay. If they respond, a lot of times they will immediately. Then I use the tools to get their, you know, get information to them. Okay. So let me talk to you about those tools. Okay. Cause I'm, I'm on one is prospect. I would tell you, and I'll, and I'll talk to you when I get to the last one, the repeat, I'm going to give you some lead ideas. Okay. We'll, we'll talk about how to generate leads. Okay. But with prospecting, it's, you know, it's prospecting is just who are you going to talk to? That's really all prospecting means. Then contacting. Okay. So let's talk about number two, contact. Contacting is merely what am I going to show somebody on the first initial thing? Okay. Now there are quite a few sites uh, in uh, uh, New Life that a lot of people use, whether that's CDs or whatever, there's different ones out there. I have one that I use called the thisgelworks.com and it's just got, it's a generic site. Nobody can sign up there, but it's just got corporate video, testimony video, PDF on there um, and so on. So somebody can go on there, look at the information and so on. The purpose for that is really just to get the, the, uh, get somebody thinking about the idea of what what we're talking about, okay? Of what I'm, I'm trying to open their mind to something, okay? And by doing that, then I can follow up with somebody, okay? So if I so if I present, okay? So I've made contact. Typically, when I make contact, okay, back in the back before texting became so uh, you know mainstream uh, in the norm, I always always made phone calls to people before I sent them anything through email. Um, and I believe that that I had a very good success rate with that. Um, and my success was very good due to the fact that when I would talk to somebody, I would call and ask permission. I say, Hey, uh, I'll use Mel as an example. Hey, Mel, this is Mike Healy. Hey, what's up? Da, da, da. Hey, listen, I know you're busy. I'm not going to take up any of your time. Do you care if I send an email on something? No, that's fine. Okay. And I've had people, what's really cool is over, you know, all the years that I've trained on this, I had plenty of people years later that have tried to recruit me into stuff the exact same way. Okay. So it's, it's kind of cool. So I know it works. And I always looked at everything that they sent me because it was, you know, kind of cool that they did that. But the reason is, is, you know, most of us don't want to get spammed and so on. Now, texting is a little different because people can ignore your text. People can, you know, they, they look at it real quick and it's so, you know, so uh, little interaction. So if you've watched the texting video, you can look it up on YouTube. I have that on there to where I would tell you to go out there and I would text somebody, Hey, have you heard about this? A HGH product and so on. And they, you know, they click on it and off it goes. Right. And then if somebody follows up with somebody, so the presentation is again, I'm always using a tool. I'm using a video PDF website, um, putting in, you know, maybe introducing them to a Facebook group so they can look at testimonies or something like that to get, to, to get a good look at what I'm doing. I'm really just trying to start to get the conversation rolling, starting to get the, the you know, the pipeline full of people. Now, number four, is what we call follow-up, okay? Prospect, contact, present, follow-up. Now, everybody's heard the phrase, fortunes in a follow-up. Couldn't be more true in networking, okay? You'd be shocked at how many people just go sign up with other people because somebody contacted them. They were excited about it. They never followed up with them, never left them information, never, uh, you know, never got any, uh, you know, details on how to contact that person. And they went and they found somebody else to sign up with, okay? It happens all the time in networking. It happens all the time. You have to be proactive. You have to be proactive in your follow-up, especially in your follow-up, especially in your follow-up. Okay. Back to the dollar thing. It's all about, uh, you know, and to my, uh, write this down. If you want, this is a kind of a key thing I live by activity matters most. In my opinion, activity matters most. I don't care what it is. I don't care how bad you mess up. I don't care what you say or how you say it. Um, typically activity matters most. Most people, if they're making enough noise, somebody's going to eventually ask what they are yelling about. Okay. And, and there's ways you can obviously push people away by being a goofball. Um, but if you do it tactfully and so on, okay, you can, you can do that. So with follow-up, here's how I have always followed up. Okay. If somebody replied to one of my texts, maybe immediately, that was just me asking that the text was actually me asking permission to send them to this to look at something. Okay. Once they have looked at something 
or I think time has passed where they've watched a video or something like that. Then I reply back with, hey, did you have a chance? And they say, yes. I typically, whatever they ask or whatever they say, if they said, yeah, I went to the website or whatever, I never, I always ask this question, what did you like best? Now, the, the purpose for asking somebody what they liked best is this, is too many people during the recruiting process uh, start talking about what excites them versus what excites the person that you're calling, the prospect. Okay, and it's a huge, huge problem. So many people do uh, when they get on conference calls or when they do three-way calls. Uh, I laugh all the time when I, you know, I've three-way people with upline or people sideline even just, you know, if they had different stories and it cracks me up how that person that I three-wayed and they're my expert just starts rambling, just say, da, 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 da. but they never take the time to talk to the person about the most important thing that that person wants to talk about, which is first off themselves, and secondly, what interested them? Okay, that's why it's so easy for me to close people. It's so easy because I don't guess. I ask you what you want to know. What, what, what is it that you're interested in? Okay, was it the, was it the, the application of the product? Was it the was it the, the testimony you saw? Was it the comp plan? You you, you know you're interested in the industry. Um, whatever it might be, we're not talking about what I'm talking about. We're talking about what you want to talk about. Okay. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you a book recommendation. I had a couple of tools here I wanted to show you. I'm going to give you a book recommendation that you could read because it's this thin. Okay. And I don't know if it'll flip backwards or not uh, on Facebook when I'm doing it through a Live here. It's called Listening for Success in case you're just reading it backwards. Listening for Success. I think you might get the light off of it by Steve Shapiro. Steve Shapiro. Got it? Okay. Um, this book is exactly that. Listening for Success. I used to verbally throw up on people so often it wasn't even funny during conversations because I like to hear myself talk. Um, most people do, you know, I, um, but, but at the same time, again, I wasn't listening to people. I wasn't talking about what they wanted to talk, talk about. Okay. And I'm telling you, if you can learn how to ask questions over and over and over and over, you don't have to close people. I have never closed anybody. I just not in my nature. I don't care if you join or not. I could care less. You know, you know why? Because the dollar test works. If you if you hem and haw, I'm gone. I'm you don't even see me. You you don't even you're gonna have to come look for me for me to follow up again with you. That's how fast I move through. I move through people as fast as possible. I don't need to 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 badger and beg somebody. You don't need to badger and beg anybody. You need to just share information with more people faster, say less to more people, use the tools, be the messenger, not the message. Anyhow, let me get back to listening for success, the book. Um, perfect example of, of this is I, I signed a guy up one time, it was hilarious, walked into his office. I knew this guy was right for the business I was in. I walked in, I sat down with him. I said, hey, Steve, how's it going? And Steve must not have talked to anybody or had been living in a cave for a month. And he literally, this is not an exaggeration, I swear, because he, he wrote, raised his hand, raised his hand and admitted to this during a live presentation and the training I did like a month later, Steve talked for 35 minutes straight. And I sat there like this. I was like, really? Yeah. I'm gonna grab my water, fire some water down. Wow. This is me. I listened to everything he said. He listened, he talked about, he talked about baseball. He talked about uh, business. He talked about his car. He talked about all this. And here's the funny part. Okay. He knew he had a little tiny inkling of what I did um, because I had sent him some information. I used tools. I'd let him look at a website, let him watch a couple of videos. So when I went and followed up with him, basically it was one of those deals where I, he wanted me to come over and sit with him. He was local. It wasn't a big deal, you know, and, and I went and sat with him after 35 minutes. All of a sudden he's sitting here, he's talking, talking, talking. And I see him go and he leans back in his chair and he goes, you know what? I, I really like what you've got here. And I think, uh, you know what? I, I'm in. I want to sign up and I want to do this. I'm like, really? That's awesome. <laughs> OK. And I just I just started laughing into myself. I didn't laugh. I didn't laugh right out loud at him. I was like, man, Steve, I'm, I'm excited to have you on this. I think you're going to be fantastic at this. Right. And got him signed up. The, the key here was this is it's hard sometimes. It's really hard to. Uh, to learn to listen to people and listen to what their interests are, okay? 
And here's, uh, and the thing is, is you'll build more rapport with people that way. You'll build a lot more rapport with people because people like people that listen to them. Okay. When you, when you ask questions, you're getting somebody to, to put their own defenses down, to let you in on themselves. So you can figure out what's the real core issue that you could find. Okay. And I'm thinking the whole time they're talking, I'm, I'm taking notes. I'm taking notes in my head. I'm taking notes in my head. Oh, just said, just said they got two kids. Okay, great. Uh, oh, I got one kid that's uh, needs money for college. Okay, I'm putting that one in the checkbox. Um, oh man, they uh, they got uh, joint pain. Okay, check that box off. Right, whatever it might be, I'm building a list of things in my head that I'm going to send use for it. either. I'm going to find a tool for it, and when I say tool, just not besides just stuff, is I might also think of a person that they mentioned to, or a, a problem that they mentioned that I've talked to or seen a person in a Facebook group or something that I can give them a link to go see somebody's uh, you know, Facebook post or an image or something like that, that addresses what they told me. Here's the problem. Again, if I go back to the recruiting process, a lot of times most people are just firing information at them, firing information at them, sending them stuff. And if they're not, if they're a, they're a money person, all they want to know about the money, 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 and all you're doing is sending them product, 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 they're done. They're gone. They're going to find somebody else that's going to talk to them about money. So you have to understand that. Anyhow, let me let me keep going. Let's talk about the last one here on here. And then I got some other stuff. <clears throat> We're going to talk about repeat. Excuse me. I do talk kind of fast when I'm rolling here, right? Um, repeat. Okay. All repeating is, is repeating steps one through four. Prospect, contact, present, follow up, and repeat. Learn to be the messenger, not the message. Learn the law of large, large numbers. In case you don't know about that, go get yourself this CD. Uh, Jim Rohn, building your network marketing business. Um, if you hear this, you're probably gonna you're gonna think you're sounding to listening to me over and over and over again. I pretty much have track six memorized on here, which is the law of large large numbers. Law of large numbers dictates that if you do something long enough, a ratio will appear. Okay, uh, anybody can do that. You can actually find that. Uh, I think if you go to YouTube and type in. Uh, Jim Rohn, Network Marketing Business. I think somebody probably bootlegged the audio and put it on there. If you listen to that and apply it, boom, you're going to make a lot of money. I had another guy that I talked to uh, or heard train. He called it MDC, Minimum Daily Contacts. MDC is very simple. Minimum Daily Contacts is just make yourself a goal of how many people you want to talk to a day. Maybe it's one a day. Maybe it's two a day. Maybe it's 10 a day. Wow. <clears throat> just had lightning. If you saw what that flash was, that was kind of crazy. It's been raining here for days. I think I live in uh, Ireland or something. Okay, so let's get to the repeat, and then I'm gonna maybe take some questions if I can, um, if I can get on here and uh, or ask, take some questions if you got any. Okay, let's talk about repeating the process. The reason you can repeat the process is because you can you can find more prospects. Back to number one. Okay, understand that in most people's phones. There's a minimum of 500 contacts in here that you could easily send a text to, make a phone call to, or so on. And again, please, please, please don't prejudge people. Okay, so let me give you some other ideas. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm getting a little tickle in my throat from talking so fast. Is a uh, warm market. I wanted to make that one, okay? Now, another place that you can find people to continually uh, do things, and, and here's... Here's why I started out. If you have, if you're coming on late to this thing, make sure you watch the beginning of this presentation because I went through this story, the dollar test and dollar story I talked about. You got to watch that part at least to understand the rest of this. Is that learning to talk to more people faster is just a matter of contacting more people. Okay. Now, one of the in today's day and age, technology-wise, there has never been a time in the history of mankind that you can get your message out or tell your story to more people than you can today with the power of the internet. Okay. Now here's the thing as a lot of people are intimidated to make a video or to do something online. Okay. Here's what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you this and listen very, very close. Cause I'm going to give you a gold gold nugget here is you need to understand that God created you specifically for specific things and given you a perfect perfect personality that will uh, uh, resonate with somebody that's, that, that you need to be in front of. Okay. It's the easiest way to explain it kind of in a nutshell is don't underestimate who you are as a person currently and what your current capabilities are 
just because you're trying to compare yourself with people who have done things in the past or are way ahead of the game than you are. Everybody starts somewhere, but you've got to learn how to run your own race and take the initiative to do, to do that. Okay. All right. If you didn't know it, all the v YouTube videos I made over the last probably year, I make on my cell phone. It's just an, it's just an iPhone and I put it on a little camera stand um, to get really good sound. I have a little mic there, but you can use the mic on here. What I would recommend that you do is tell a story, okay, or even better yet, a product demonstration. Now, I'm going to talk to you about making sure you're compliant, okay, first and foremost. I typically, if you notice any of the videos that I talk, if I'm talking testimony stuff or with anything, I never reference a specific product by name. I might call it a nickname, like a gel, uh, but I don't call it the actual name. And I never basically say, you never ever say cure or anything like that. Uh, you can say discomfort instead of pain, and you can look some of these things up. But what I typically would tell you to do is people like to see demonstrations. Um, I'm a big mark marketing guy. Like I, I get paid to do this and so on by people that help me set co you know, companies, pay me to do a lot of stuff. So I know this stuff in addition to having some networking skills in marketing demonstration of product is so, 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 uh, cool. It's not even funny. It's, it's really a, an amazing thing because people like to watch and hear stories and watch something produce. Okay. Why do you, you ever seen one of those doodle videos? You know, the, the hand-drawn doodle video. The reason those are those are so popular and why they're compelling is people are watching something being created. Okay, people are watching something be created. The same thing goes for if you watch recipe videos online, if you watch other things. So I'm telling you that if you just took your phone and you put it here and you sat there and you said, hey, um, I just wanted to talk to you and you, you held the product. So maybe they don't even see the name of the stuff or whatever. I'm going to talk to you about something that just came across that. I just, I am stunned at this thing has a little, little check this out. It's got a little popper right here. All you got to do is you take it and you put it right here. Check this out. Rub it in like that. Look at that. Can you see that? Oh my gosh, man. Uh, it doesn't even have a scent to it. Okay. I'm telling you. People out of curiosity are going to go, what the heck are they doing? What, what is that? You don't have to explain anything. Remember back to the stuff I talked to you about uh, 20, minute, 20 minutes ago, using tools to do the work. I'm telling you, if you go, if, if ladies, ladies, if you do this multiple times, to do one without makeup, your hair all frizzed out, looking like you're psychotic and you're ready to snap on people. And get in front of the camera and do one of these things and, and do that and go, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. And that's it. People will either think you're crazy, which is fine, because that's what most people think about networkers anyhow. But they're going to also be inquiring, what the heck are you, what are you talking about? Have they lost their mind? People like to watch the car crash. <laughs> why do we, why do people do that? Why do you, those are the most popular videos, by the way. So learn to be in, uh, you know, be in, have some intrigue with it. Okay. Same thing. Show somebody you looking at your back office and going, holy smokes. I, I, I'm just stunned at what I'm looking at back here. This, this is, I am, I can't believe I have been working, uh, as a stay at home dad for, for years. And now I'm looking at my computer and I'm so excited what's going on in my, in my life. It is, is just, this is just mind boggling and end the video somebody's going to ask you what the heck you're talking about. I'm telling you, don't, you don't have to puke on people. You don't have to. And when they ask, you say, man, all, all I know is write that phrase down. Uh, Cause people can say this, 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 and this, they can come up with this, this, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, what is that? Objections, objections. That's the word I was looking for. They can look for objections on everything. And you say, well, that's a great point. All I know is this. All I know is this. All I know is pointing to my computer screen. All I know is this is easy, right? This is easy. Do this. Anybody can do this. This isn't hard to do, right? Squirt, squirt, go like that. Not very hard to do. And if you understand that, you will have more people going like this, going like this. Private, private message me. What the heck? Private message me. Private message me. And by doing that, 
you're going to create noise. Remember I said activity matters most? What did I say at the very beginning? I said less the more people as fast as I could. And I think I was in, when I did that contest in another meeting that we did, I won that one too. Okay, guys, I had somebody, I think I went to the same guy's training like a year later and he did the same thing and I won that one too. And I, and I, and I watch people that do it and it's, it has nothing to do with in networking. I'm telling you, it is not the most skilled person. It is not the sharpest person that can give the presentation. We've got in the company I'm in right now, we've got some extremely sharp uh, people doing conference calls. I could never and would never want to talk like those people. Some of those people, I just wouldn't, it's just not in my wheelhouse. Okay. I'm just, I'd rather be just a dude. Um, but I can point people to the smart people. I can point people to listen to somebody. I can text them the recorded call. I can have them listen to the conference call and I'm going through the numbers faster, 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 and faster. Now here's the thing. I want to talk to this before I forget, because I'm glad it popped in my skull. When you make that video on your phone, I'm going to teach you something really, really cool that you're going to like if you listen to it. When you make one video, make it maybe on one of your initial videos, make it less than 60 seconds. The reason is, is you're going to do this with it. You are going to what we do, what we call in marketing, repurpose it, repurpose it, splinter it. How many social platforms are, are out there? Twitter, Facebook. Instagram, Snapchat, uh, LinkedIn, take YouTube. So, so we're going to start, start with those six. Okay. Take that one video, take that one video that you just made. That's 55 seconds long of you going like this, smiling, all running around the house, going like this, whatever, just something obnoxious. I'm telling you, just do some kind of activity just to get people to look at you. People will figure out why, why, why you're insane. And when you do that, you're going to then post it on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, if you have a Snapchat and LinkedIn. OK, and people are going to go. They're going to start scratching their head. Hmm. Take another video. Do another video a day or two later. Sit in front of your computer reading something. Guess what? You're going to take that video and you're going to repurpose it. You just turn one video into five deals, five things. Splinter it. OK, if you've got a blog page, maybe you have a blog post or blog site or whatever, take that video and post it on there and write a little caption. Uh, this was me at three o'clock in the morning, fired up. I couldn't sit still. I had to make a video. Thought you'd find it kind of humorous. LOL, LOL, LOL. Right. And post that video there. You just turn that into the seventh piece of content. OK, think about that. You can take tools that the company has and do about and do reviews, do reviews. It's a huge buzzword. It's a huge keyword, by the way, review say, Hey, I'm going to do a, I want to do a review on this blank product. Right. And da, 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 and you do it and you post it on your YouTube channel. You post it on your Facebook, you post it on this and people are going to look at it. Somebody's going to look at it. Somebody's going to see it. It's just the law of large numbers. If you work that through that. Okay. All right. So I wanted to, I, I know I got to, uh, I th said I would take questions, but I'm not done talking apparently. Um, anyhow, I'm going to, I'm going to take some questions if you want. Okay. So uh, yes, Michael, I'm going to do that. Um, so anyhow, let me, let me kind of give you a close. Then I'll take questions. And I'd recommend a lot of times people ask decent questions. Uh, you can post them down below and then I'll, I'll pop them up uh, and I'll see if I can see them that way I can, I'll, I'll if, if they don't come up on your screen, I'll say what they are and we could do that. But here's what, here's what I would tell you. Okay. The five steps that I've done have never, never failed. Prospect contact, present, follow up and repeat. Okay. Oh, I got one more thing for you. One more thing. I remember I showed you this and I showed you this. I'm sorry. I had one more tool sitting here. Go read this. This one's, this one's spectacular. How I raised myself from failure to success in selling by Frank Bettiger. Bet Bettiger. So I think that's how you call it. Betcher. OK, um, your life will change in network marketing in the very first chapter. It's worth it for the first chapter. Go buy it on Amazon. And the reason it is so good is the first chapter is all about enthusiasm, enthusiasm, enthusiasm. Enthusiasm will take you farther than knowledge every day of the week. Uh, ignorance on fire will always beat knowledge on ice. 
ignorance on fire will always beat knowledge on ice. Okay. <clears throat> and then, I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing else that you can, you can do to, to there's nothing better than being enthusiastic. Okay. And I'll prove it to you with this. And then I'm going to take questions is the majority of people in network marketing sign up the majority of their personals in their first 30 to 60 days. Question. Okay. Think, think hard on this one. How much knowledge do they have in their first 30 days? In fact, most people sign their most people up in their first week. Okay. Did, did they get all this magical training? Have they gone to every seminar? Have they gone to all the meetings? Absolutely not. The reason was their sheer enthusiasm of what's what they wanted and they desired in their head translated into them signing into the business and they were going to tell people real quick. They were ignorance on fire and they worked. Here's the other problem I see people have. As soon as they start learning more, remember I said this a half hour ago, that when they start learning more, they start doing less because they become the message instead of just the messenger with enthusiasm. Don't do that. Keep enthusiastic, move faster, okay? Because typically when the, the smarter people get, the less they, they, the more they talk, trying to impress people with knowledge. I don't do that. That's why I'm good at what I do is because I learn to stay dumb, quote unquote. I stick to the core tasks. I focus on the core tasks and the right ad activities every single time. Okay, anyhow, thanks for watching. I'm